And there is this theme now running through his government, not just that he's running this protection racket for Andrews and for Palaszczuk, but look at what he's doing, as Zoe pointed out before, in the industrial relations space. Businesses went with the Prime Minister to the job summit. Aki and the BCA and other people of standing in the business community. They thought that they were going there to stand on equal ground with the union leaders in a way perhaps that Bob Hawke would have accommodated in the 80s. But instead, they were deceived because the objective the Prime Minister had was ultimately to deliver solely on the agenda of union bosses, including the CFMEU. And they were jolted by it. They put forward their views about how we need to increase productivity, how we need to address the tightness in the labour market. They spoke about how they thought that they could provide support to help families and small businesses with the cost of living crisis. But all of that was discarded because the Prime Minister's interest here, as it was for Gough Whitlam, is to try and find a way through a, a situation to arrive at a solution that is in the benefit of the broader Labor movement. That's not workers. Our party today is the party of workers. We are the party of small business. We're no longer... Absolutely. The voice is holding up all right so far, so you're in trouble. I'll keep talking. I think there is an opportunity for the Prime Minister to demonstrate to the Australian public that he has their backs and that he's going to act in our national interest instead of the Labor Party's self-interest. And I think it's in relation to the debate on nuclear power. Now, we as a party have taken a position. We've shift community, shifted community sentiment off the back of the AUKUS deal that we did with the United States and the United Kingdom, which will underpin our national security for decades to come, with the nuclear propulsion system on that boat, we started a conversation about nuclear power because it's the only credible way to achieve net zero by 2050 without bankrupting businesses and families across the country. By firming up renewables and ensuring that lights don't go out, which is the pathway that the Prime Minister has us on at the moment. But has the Prime Minister entered this debate with any ounce of sincerity? Has Chris Bowen displayed an ounce of intellect or maturity in relation to the debate? No, no, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. This is probably one of the most significant debates in our country because the Labor Party has us on this reckless path, trying to pretend that the battery that AGL just installed in South Australia at the cost of $190 million is going to keep the lights on during the period of darkness or during a period of inclement weather, it lasts for one hour. It lasts for one hour. Now, the IGA down the road or the butcher shop down the road or the fruit shop down the road is not going to run their business when the cold rooms or the deep freezers can't run 24-7. And they can't keep them running if they can't afford to pay their bills. Older Australians, pensioners, self-funded retirees, people otherwise on fixed incomes, can't afford another 25% increase in their power bill this year, but it's coming under this government. And when you look at Ontario and Canada, where they have 60 or 70% firming through the use of nuclear technology, their power bills today are half what we're paying per kilowatt hour. And Chris Bowen says, well, it's too expensive, or do you want one in your backyard, like talking to a school child? We need to have a mature debate in our country about energy. And the reason that the Labor Party won't have this debate is because they know that internally, as we saw recently at the Labor conference, they don't have a position of unity in relation to this technology. Bob Hawke couldn't achieve that position, even though he was strongly in favour of nuclear energy. John Howard is strongly in favour of the latest technology of nuclear energy. Young Australians are very much in favour because they're well read on the topic. They understand the latest technology, the zero emissions, the capacity it has to work within our system. We are acting in the national interest. 
And I believe, as I said in my opening remarks, that this great party that I've been so proud to be a part of for over three decades, many of you for a similar period of time, in some cases much longer, our party is at its best when we stand up and when we're counted. When we stand up, even when the polls are against us, for a position that we know is in our country's best interests.